In this video, we're going to look at examples of solving uh, absolute value inequalities. And then not only do we want to have the algebraic representation, we also want to graph it and write in interval notation. So here's what we're given in letter A. The absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3. So again, let's think about this. The absolute value of x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So that's 3 or more units away from 0. Because this is a gray tor than, it's an or situation. So we have two cases. We could say that x is greater than or equal to 3 itself, or x is less than or equal to negative 3, right? It could be further to the left than negative 3 on the number line. So this would be the algebraic representation. We just split it up. Notice that when we write the two cases, we do not include the absolute value, because what we're saying is what's inside. This thing here has to be bigger than or equal to 3, or less than or equal to negative 3. So we do not include the absolute value when we're setting up the cases. Um, there's nothing to solve here because x is already by itself in either case. So we're ready for the graph. x is greater than or equal to 3. That would be a closed circle over 3 with an arrow going to the right. x is less than or equal to negative 3. That would be a closed circle over negative 3 with the graph going to the left. So this would be the representation of the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3. An interval notation. So when we write interval notation, we want to kind of keep it parallel to the graph. So we're going to start with this interval here. This interval is saying all the numbers that are less than negative 3. Well, there is no least number that is smaller than negative 3. So that would start at negative infinity and go up to negative 3. Because negative 3 is included, we use a bracket. Then we're going to use the notation OR. And then the numbers, the solutions start back at 3, where 3 is included. And there is no biggest number bigger than 3, so we use infinity. So here are the three representations. We have the algebraic, the graphical, and interval notation. For letter B, we have the absolute value of x is less than 2. This is a less than. We have absolute value of x is less than 2. That means it needs to be closer than 2 uh, on a number line from 0. When we see a less than, when the variable is on the left, we are talking about a conjunction. That means it needs to meet the two requirements. It needs to be less than 2 and also greater than negative 2. The way we can represent those is in one compound inequality, where we say negative 2 is less than x is less than 2. Sometimes students don't like the fact that I said one thing, but the way I wrote it, it kind of didn't translate to that. So what I said was I said x had to be bigger, uh, sorry, x had to be smaller than 2, but also x had to be greater than negative 2. Well, I said greater than, but I don't see a greater than sign here. Did I write it wrong? No, I didn't write it wrong. If you look at this really carefully, this doesn't say x is greater than negative 2. This says negative 2 is less than x. So negative 2 is less than x is equivalent to x is greater than negative 2. When we're writing a compound inequality, we only use the less than symbol, and it has to mathematically make sense. If I switch this and said negative 2 is greater than x is less than 2, that doesn't make any sense. It's mathematically incorrect. So this is the way we write it when we have the less than. We can only write a compound inequality when we're given the less than symbol. You cannot do that over here. That would be an improper notation for greater than or greater than or equal to. OK, back to B. So we have negative 2 is less than x is less than 2. In this case, normally I talk about the left-hand side and the right-hand side. In this case, we actually have like three sides. There's the left, the middle, and the right. What we want to verify here is that the middle has the variable isolated, which it does in this case. So in this case, we have the algebraic solution set up. Now we need to graph our solution. So we have one end point at negative 2 where it's not included, so we'll use an open circle. And we have another end point at 2 where it's also not included, so we'll use an open circle. And then all of the solutions, so where are all of the numbers that are closer than 2 from 0 on the number line? Well, it's in between negative 2 and 2. So that's what our solution set would look like for the absolute value of x is less than 2. In interval notation, negative 2 is not included, so we would say negative 2, and then the solutions go up to 2, where 2 is also not included. So we have the algebraic representation, the graphic representation, and the interval notation. Just as a side note, either one of these, if you want to write it like this or like this, is totally fine. Um, you just have to be careful if you, if you split them up, just know that when you graph it, 
you graph them together with a line segment. It would be incorrect to say, okay, uh, x is less than negative 2 looks like this, and x is greater than negative 2 would look like this, and then you have arrows going all over your paper. Uh, that, that would be mathematically incorrect, right? Because now you're saying that there are solutions over here when there are not. So we just want to be really careful. I recommend this, but I understand that not everyone likes that. So I'm going to erase that because that is terrible looking. Okay. Moving on to example C. Example C, we have the absolute value of x minus 12 is less than or equal to negative 8. Before we get all panicked about the fact that there's negative over here, let's keep in mind that the absolute value is not yet isolated. We want to make sure when we're solving our absolute value inequalities that the first thing we do is get the absolute value by itself, which it's not. It's being subtracted by 12. To undo subtraction by 12, we'll add 12 to both sides. So now we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to negative 8 plus 12 is 4. <sighs> okay, great. Now we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4. So we're looking for closer to 0 than 4 is. So we're talking about a compound conjunction. We can write that just like I did for b. We can say, okay, that means that negative 4 is the lower bound. So negative 4 has to be less than or equal to these numbers. And these numbers have to be less than or equal to 4. As I mentioned in B, you can separate them into 2, though I don't recommend it. So here we have the algebraic. We can graph this, so negative 4 is included. So we'll do a closed circle over negative 4. 4 is included, so we'll do a closed circle over 4. <coughs> Excuse me. And the numbers that are closer to 0 than uh, 4 would be in between negative 4 and 4. So the graph would look like this. Again, notice it's just a single line segment bounded by negative 4 and 4. In interval notation, we would say uh, we're going to do a bracket because negative 4 is included. So from negative 4 to 4 is where the solutions are. So we have our three representations, algebraic, graphical, and interval notation. Last but not least, letter D, we have the absolute value of t plus 9 is greater than 10. Uh, again, the first thing we want to make sure is we want to make sure that this thing is isolated, which it currently is not. It is being added to 9, so to undo that, we will take away 9 from both sides. Then we get the absolute value of t is greater than 1. So we're looking for numbers that are further away from 0 than 1 is on a number line. There are two distinct intervals of numbers that do that. First of all, we could just have t is greater than 1, is where one set of solutions are, or where else are numbers further away uh, than a distance of 1 on the number line from 0? That would be when the numbers are less than negative 1. So this would be the algebraic representation right here. Again, you cannot combine these into a one compound inequality like this. It's, it's mathematically unsound. So we leave it separated with the word or. When we graph it, t is greater than 1, we'll do an open circle over 1 with an arrow going to the right to represent all of these numbers, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. Or t is less than negative 1. That would be an open circle on negative 1 with the arrow going to the left. So that's indicating that negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, all of those numbers are solutions. This would be the graph. Lastly, we need to write interval notation. Interval notation, again, it needs to mirror what we see. So it needs to go from least to greatest. We're going to start with this one here. To represent these numbers that are smaller than negative 1, that would go from negative infinity to negative 1. And then also there's a solution set here. It starts at 1 and it goes up to infinity. So this would be the interval notation representation for letter D.